Brother Simon's 88th article. Yet now. I'm guessing Mr. and Mr. Born Again believe some of the greatest scriptural truths begin with thou shalt or thou shalt not. First off, let's do away with that. Archaic, pretentious. Archaic, pretentious English, okay. Second, to whom we're given the Ten Commandments. Raise your hand if you're an Israelite. Israelite. All others, put your hands down. In fact, go ahead and sit on them. Seriously, one of the greatest scriptural truths began with two very simple words. But before we go there, let's take a look at what precedes this gem. In Romans 3, Paul the Apostle, the, Paul the Apostle of the Nations does a pretty good job eviscerating Mankind in its wicked ways dig. Not just not one is just even not even one. Romans three ten, not one is understanding. Not one is seeking out God. Romans three eleven, always avoiding him at the same time. At the same time, they were useless and not. One is doing kindness. There is not even one. Romans 3.12. The way of peace they do not know. Romans 3.17. There is no fear of God in front of the their eyes. Romans 3.18. Then Paul blasts us with this. Now, we are aware that whatever the law is saying, it is speaking to those under the law, that every mouth may be barred and the entire world may be come subject to the just verdict of God because by works of law no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight for through the law is the recognition of sin. Romans 3, 19 through 20. By works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight. No flesh means no one. However, the next two words Paul uses are akin to the greatest divine drum roll in history. One that would even leave Neil... Leave Neil Pitt. With the mouth agape. As he introduces the following extraordinary truth, yet now, suspense building, yet now, yet that me, not Paul, I just want everyone's attention, yet now, apart from the law, righteousness of God has manifest, Romans 3, 21. I'm going to quote Martin and Zender here because what my friend and fellow brother in Christ wrote about this verse is so damned good. Nothing's going before in Romans had a stitch or stammer to do with God's righteousness. It was all about my failure to attain it. The words before concerned the inability of human beings to attain to God's divine standard. Everything here, heretofore, heretofore, contributed to humanity hanging high and drawing without a single hope and expectation in this world. We speak incessantly, incessantly. Incidentally, of the nations having no expectation and without God in the world, Ephesians 2.12, but Paul has just set the nations and Israelite adrift in the same boat or, of doom. There is not one righteous, not, no, not one, yet now forget how we never saw a thing. The question now is, how do we see it? We simply turn our heads. We simply turn our heads away from our own failures and toward Christ. What could be easier, yet what could be harder? We turn our heads and eyes from our own darkened hearts toward the stakes set so firmly into the earth, to the man suffering and dying upon it. Thus engaged, we behold something so different that so strange to our sight, so foreign to anything we could imagine for ourselves. We have looked within for the righteousness of God, each time coming away empty. The disappointment has vexed us, tortured us, and nearly killed us unaccountably. We have repeated and repeated the failure, yet now, yet now a righteousness of God is manifest. God is manifest. Z. WTF Romans, part 24. Paul then goes on to tell us how righteousness of God is manifest, yet righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing, for there is no distinction for all have sinned and are wanting the glory of God, Romans 3, 22, 23, through Christ Jesus' faith, not your faith, which jibes perfectly with what Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For in grace through faith are you saved, and this is not of you. It is God's 
approach present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting through faith, not out of you. Back to Romans through Jesus Christ's faith. Back to Ephesians, not of works. Back to Romans, apart from law. After all, the law is nothing but works, and as Paul has already explained, by works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight. So exactly who is Jesus Christ's faith for? Back to Romans one, one last time. For all and on all who are believing. Now, I'm going to quote myself from my article for all and on all because it's pretty damned good, too. It's for all, as Paul tells us in Romans, which encompasses the entirety of humanity. Remember, for all sin, but it is only on all who are currently believing. If God says it is for all, he is not going to keep it from some, even Hitler and Joe. Osteen will eventually be given Christ's faith. Those whom God has chosen to believe now, designating us before him, if it's just mine for the place of a son for him through Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 5 have Jesus Christ's faith placed on us at the, this time on all who are believing. This perfectly jives with 1 Timothy 4 10. We rely on the living God who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers, all mankind for all, especially of believers on all, yet now. Two beautiful words, huh? So are for all.